It's time to go bar down. Welcome to Friday Night Fights from Central New York, where we're kicking off a big boxing weekend. The Hall of Fame inducts 12 new members in Canastota, including Oscar De La Hoya. And in New York City tomorrow night, Miguel Cotto and Sergio Martinez face off in the world's most famous arena. Tonight, we start it with our main event at 154 pounds between Mexican veteran Noberto Gonzalez and Cuban Olympic silver medalist Udell Johnson. As always, brought to you by Corona Extra. Three live fights tonight, including our main event as Udell the Surprise Johnson takes on Noberto the Demon Gonzalez, two fighters that are trying to separate themselves in the junior middleweight division and start to make some noise. Somebody will have a chance to do that with a victory here tonight. It is Hall of Fame induction weekend right down the road. Look at all the celebs here tonight. Mike Tyson. Zab Judah, one of the biggest white fans we know. Oscar-nominated actress Rosie Perez is in the house. Andre Ward is here. We'll be speaking to a lot of these guys coming up later on. And the man being inducted this weekend, the golden boy himself, Oscar De La Hoya, will join me and Teddy Atlas ringside coming up later here on Friday Night Fights. For now, we jump right into some action. And we start in the middleweight division. Here is Yevgen Hitchroff out of the Ukraine, 25 years old, a perfect 4-0 record, including four knockouts. He just started fighting in December. He's known as the Ukrainian Lion. Sounds scary. And there is Chris Chapman. He has 16 professional fights. He's 12-3-1 with five knockouts. A nice military background with the U.S. Navy as a personal training coordinator from 2004 to 2008. And both his father and grandfather boxed in the U.S. Navy. Teddy Atlas, I know you got a very good look recently at the Ukrainian Yevgen Hitchrov. Yeah, he was training actually one of the Doc Atlas Captain Kids gyms that Mike Foundation runs, the one in Brooklyn, actually. And he's actually training with Gary Stark Sr., who trains some of the fighters in my gyms and also trains a terrific kid, Marcus Brown, who we hope is a future world champion, undefeated light heavyweight, There's also was an Olympian, okay. like Hedroff. So what did you see from him? What's the scouting report? What do we expect tonight? He's going to blow out Chapman. <laughs> Succinct and to the point. Boxer, center of the ring. Oh, he's physically strong. Good body puncher. Okay, gentlemen, you see your instructions in the dressing room. Expect a clean bat out of both of you. Touch goes now. Go back to your corner. We'll get going. And I can tell you one thing. That after 503 amateur fights, if you don't know how to fight, you should be doing something else. And that's what he drove has. 503 amateur fights. He won the world championships in the amateur boxing world in 2011. Bell. And in 2012, he was an Olympic representative for Ukraine. Chapman has his hands full which is nothing new for Chapman. Chapman has lost two of his last four. Last time that Chapman Todd stepped up, it was a big step up three fights ago with undefeated top-rated Jamel Jallo. He was knocked out in three rounds. Stepping up. Oh, Chapman with a left hand stuns. Hitchrock, who backed up quickly and nearly went down. He got a southpaw in Chapman. And you got a top four that's throwing big shots. Big, long, looping shots as well. And one of them connected. Break! Step back. It seems like Chapman's going to be able to do any damage. It'll come early in the fight. He's fresh. He's hungry. He's aggressive. It's paying off now. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Chapman, boy, oh boy, oh boy. He's used to being in tough. Nothing new for him. His people have really thrown him in. In his fifth fight, they put him in with U.S. Olympian, now world champion Demetrius Andre. Three fights ago, as they say, put him in with 24-0, undefeated top-rated contender, Jamel Charlo. Well, if you didn't know better, you might think that his managers didn't like him. <laughs> well, they're giving him a chance. That's all you want. 
a chance to see your name on the marquee. And Chapman with a win here tonight would certainly get some attention in the middleweight division. First appearance on national television here on ESPN. Both these fighters. He dropped, came in. He knows what's at stake here. Television debut came in, lightest of his career. Wants to be worked too hard. Imagine being in the squared circle right now with all these big boxing names looking at you. Got look out there, you see Oscar De La Hoya and Mike Tyson, George Foreman. I hear is in the house. Talk about nerves. All right now, hey Troy, hey, break, break, step back. Looking like those nerves have controlled him. I'm sure as people are hoping that this round serves as a round that he can shake those nerves. He's not using the jab. He's allowing. Chapman to control the tempo, to step in and out. No jab coming at all from Heedroff, and not the body work that I saw him do in the gym that I was talking about before. And he's fighting a guy in Chapman who's a lot more experienced in the pros, and Chapman knows how to move that head, knows how to survive a little bit. The body would be a good place for Heedroff to aim some of those shots. Make sure you log on to our Friday Night Fights Facebook page and score this round. Well, with uh, other fans from around the country, we'll show you the scores later here tonight. So a good opening round one, especially for Chris Chapman. Still to come tonight, it is our main event of the evening. Roberto Gonzalez taking on Udell Johnson. Teddy, what are you expecting later tonight? Well, I like to guarantee things when I can, and I guarantee that in the main event, you're going to be an interesting, or you're going to see an interesting fight and an entertaining fight. But what I do guarantee, guarantee, take it to the bank, is that both fighters in our main event, one will have a happy birthday and one will not, because they both turned 33 years of age today. And I can also tell you that they're probably not going to be blowing any candles out in the cake. Not today. They're going to have to wait till tomorrow. But I can also guarantee you what the wish is going to be when they blow those candles out. They're both going to wish that they win tonight, and this is able to catapult them into a bigger fight. And I can tell you that on with both of those guys, that they're going to be looking to cash in Box. off of this fight. And they're going to be looking at 33 years of age, understanding that the clock is ticking and that Gonzalez hopes to get over the hump where Todd, he hasn't been able to win at this level so far in his career. And that Johnson, well, Johnson wants to prove that he has that pedigree of the national Cuban team of the silver medal that he won at the 2004 He wants to prove that that's not a prize, that it means something, that he can still have a chance to be a champion, a top guy. And I'm sure that he hopes there's no trick candles on that cake. What are the odds that two professional fighters who share a birthday will be fighting break, each other break. on their birthday? I highly doubt that has ever happened in the history of boxing, although I do not know for certain. What I do know is Chapman, again, coming out looking pretty strong here against Hitchroff, the highly regarded Ukrainian who had 503 amateur fights, went 480 and 23, and was the 2012 Ukrainian champion. Says his idol is Mike Tyson, and that was a dream of his to meet him tonight in the fight on his card. Hitchoff beginning to land some shots of his own. Not going to body, that one square on the chin and Chapman backed him up. I got I was the first to say that I thought Hitchoff would blow out Chapman. I'll be the first to say I've walked so far. And also, Hitchoff not looking impressive. Not using the jab. Now he's doing a little stepping back, creating some holes, creating some opportunities to counter punch. Looking to show that strength. That Break. I saw in him, the strength that I would expect him to use as a bigger man. He drove turn pro 165. His lightest has been 163 till tonight. As I said earlier, came to 160. Lightest of his career, while Chapman has been as low as 149, Todd. And most of the fights are due to middleweight. So the bigger man, supposedly the stronger man, he drove. 
Chet carrying a lot of muscle in this fight. And again, you see a lot of head movement from each one, but too many head movements sometimes. Instead of punching all from one move. You make one move, whoa, no, 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 no knockdown. He has slipped right here. More of a push Get up in your glove. Down. Uh -huh. uh, go wrestle with him. Come on, don't throw. Let's go. He was four years younger than Chapman. Oh, nice straight right hand from Hitchhawk. See, up in the corner, Hitchhawk, I'm telling him, you gotta go to the body. I don't understand why you're not going to the body. It's like a blast of hydration. The Boxing Hall of Fame about 15 miles down the road from the Turning Stone Resort and Casino. Some of the most famous boxing fists of all time on display and will live there forever. As we get set here for round three between Yevnin Hitchroff, and he's looking uh, pretty good right now, taking on Chris Chapman. Round one, very impressive for Chapman. It seems like the Ukrainian has begun to figure him out a little bit, Ted. Yeah, well, now this round is going to use the jab. Why is jab and why the body punching has been missing for the first two rounds with this young prospect? He draws. I don't understand. Because you want to use the jab to control an experienced guy like Chapman. You know, stabilize him on the outside. There's no jab coming. What does Chapman do? He walks right in. And then he steps out what he wants. But if you jab it, and you see the spots here, like he talks to him, you stabilize that man. You control him. You set him up. You keep him from pot shotting you. And Chapman's been doing a pretty good job of pot shotting him. Break! Break! Chapman's starting to do a bad job now. No, no, no. no. He didn't in. throw you that time. All right? For the second time, I Chapman know. goes go down box. because of a, perhaps a push slash slip. No, I had something to that. Bad technique. Leaving in, getting off balance, being out of position. And that's where he talked. Had to show that 500 speed amateur experience. It happens in the Olympics. Do some counterpunch. You get a guy reaching in like that, counter him. Here's Chapman, quite frequently, is off balance, stumbling around in there, never seemed to have his feet completely underneath him. I think if he goes to the body here, he's going to wind up knocking out Chapman. There's a left hand, two of them, in fact, from Petrov. As Chapman's punches now seem to lack that zip that they once had. Double jab from Petrov, and then a one-two. Chapman needs to get off those ropes. See that little push there? That was a well-planned push by oh, Chris Chapman! Four, Holy smokes! Five, six, seven, Not good night eight. Yet. But he is stumbling. It is good night. What a shot from Hitchcock. You can tell he wanted the knockout. He wanted to impress his idol Mike Tyson, who's in the crowd, and even Iron Mike could appreciate what he saw there. And what I said early on, he told me to go right through Chapman. Even though the results were what I predicted, I'm going to say I was wrong. I'm going to say Chapman gave him a little trouble those first two rounds, more than I might have thought, and more importantly, more than Heathrow might have thought. But then finally, Heathrow started getting it, his rhythm together a little bit, shook some of those nerves that I talked about, started using the jab a little bit and then put a nice left hook on the chin of Chapman. Let's watch that money shot here from Hitchroff. Holy cow, right there. One punch and Chapman. Yeah, but boom. Todd, look at the right hand. That's the setup punch. A lot of people aren't going to talk about that. The right hand moves his eyes, and then the left hook moves his chin, his head, and his body. See, it's the right hand. Everyone's going to look at the left hook, the money punch. That scores the knockout. But you're going to see the right hand, the throwaway punch, the setup punch. That's the one that distracts Chapman. And that's the one that ultimately allows the left hook to land that cleanly. Take a look here. Now, everyone loves the big punch, but watch the right hand first. Sets up that left hook to the chin. Again, right hand down low, throwaway punch. Makes his eyes go down, and the left hook goes up. Watch. Eyes go down, left hook goes up. And Chapman collapses to the floor.
It sapped every ounce of energy out of Chris Chapman's body, the left hand from Hitchroff, who is now 5-0 and oh with five <laughs> knockouts. Let's send it now up into the ring and Bob Alexander. Ladies and gentlemen, from the event center at Turning Stone Resort and Casino in Verona, New York, your referee in charge, Dick Picozzi, stops this bout at 2 minutes, 18 seconds of the third round. Your winner by TKO, still undefeated, Evgen, the Ukraine Lion, Kitrov. It wasn't as easy as perhaps he wanted it to be, but in the end, an impressive knockout from the Ru Ukrainian line. There it is, one more time, the left hand, that's your winner. Coming up next, we'll get you ready for Miguel Cotto and Sergio Martinez. Get ready. Welcome back inside the Turning Stone Resort and Casino here in Verona, New York. I mentioned Nigel Collins would be roaming the halls and speaking with some of the best fighters in the world. And right now, he's sitting next to Andre Ward. Andre, you've been hanging out at the Hall of Fame this weekend. What have you been doing and what's the atmosphere like? I've been soaking it all in. Uh, I'm a boxing historian, a firm believer that you got to pay homage to the ones that have gone before you. So I'm around legends all weekend, and we're, we're doing nothing but just hanging out, talking, discussing boxing, and, and just enjoying ourselves. I'm having a great time in Canastota. Well, you were there. I'm sure you looked at all the plaques on the wall. Are there any of your favorite fighters there? I got so many favorite fighters, it's tough to call them out. I mean, from, you know, obviously Ali to, to, to both the Sugars, Ray Leonard, Ray Robinson, uh, Tito Trinidad, Oscar De La Hoya, Floyd. I mean, the, the list goes on and on of guys who have been inducted and guys that are still active. So I'm just a boxing fan. Who was your favorite when you were a kid? My, my, I'll tell you this, I got, I got a lot of favorites, but my first favorite, the first guy I fell in love with in the ring was Roy Jones Jr. All right, there's a big fight in New York tomorrow night. Sergio Martinez and Miguel Cotto for the middleweight championship of the world. What do you think of this fight, Andre? This is a tough one to call because it's a lot of moving pieces. Cotto's coming up in weight from 154 to 160. How's he going to look? He's got a new trainer, Freddie Roach. Uh, Martinez ha has had a lot of injuries. He says he's okay, but nobody really knows is he if he is or not. And he's the real true super... I mean, he's a real true 60-pounder. So... Who's going to take advantage of, of, of the weight? Um, I think it boils down tomorrow night on who shows up. That's what it boils down to. Thank you, Andre. Thank you. Andre Ward weighing in on Cotto and Martinez. It will take place tomorrow night at Madison Square Garden, where Miguel Cotto is very, very comfortable. This will be his ninth straight sellout in that arena. He'll have the majority of the fans backing him. 3,000 fans were in attendance this afternoon for the weigh-in. Miguel Cotto, 155. That's four pounds under the 159-pound catch weight limit. Sergio Martinez, 158 and three-quarter pounds. They are, of course, fighting for Martinez's WBC middleweight title. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape and all the numbers lean towards Martinez. He is taller. He has a longer reach. He will be much heavier tomorrow. Could put on as much as 15 pounds as they meet in Madison Square Garden. If you're not quite ready for tomorrow night's fight, after watching this next piece, you will be. It is said that boxing's origins began at a contest amongst countries. The Olympic Games in Greece in 688 BC. Since then, very little has changed, and fighters carry the dreams of nations with them into the ring. Miguel Cotto has represented Puerto Rico, an island heavily steeped in boxing tradition, with dignity for over a decade. A four-time world champion with a smothering style, he has garnered respect and admiration in the boxing world, and has a fan base that is heaviest when he fights in New York City. Miguel Cotto is just a throwback fighter. He is Roberto Duran, Julio Cesar Chavez. He has the skill sets of a real guy that's going to you know, hunt you down, wear you to the body, stoic, workmanlike, never ducked anybody. Miguel Cotto fighting like a man possessed. His opponent, the Argentine Sergio Martinez, comes from a country with a high boxing pedigree as well. But that is where the similarities end. Sergio Martinez has a very free-flowing, almost an abrupt style that he makes up on the fly. Nothing's been given to him. 
everything he's got, he's worked for him, and he's not willing to give it up in the ring, and that makes him such an intriguing fighter. That is the knockout of the year, if nothing else. A sensational, shocking, one-punch knockout. Being the middleweight champion of the world is supposed to carry a certain cachet, but a long, contentious negotiation left the champion with a bitter taste. Este combate se realiza porque yo accedí a todos los caprichos que tuvo Cotto, tales como subir último, no, subir primero al ring yo siendo el campeón, subir, este, ser presentado primero yo siendo el campeón. I just asked for something I earned. Y las peticiones que hizo fueron, en, rozaban entre lo absurdo y lo ridículo. Como dije, delirios de diva, delirios de vedette de diva, nada más. Now they are slated to meet on June 7th for the middleweight championship at the world's most famous arena. El 7 de junio yo me pongo los guantes y le pego una paliza. I own Madison Square Garden. That's my place. Esa noche los argentinos vamos a copar Nueva York, vamos a copar el Madison Square Garden y el cinturón mundial del peso mediano va a regresar a la Argentina. I don't think there's any doubt that what happened in Madison Square Garden on the night of June 7th could be the most electric night in all of boxing. Perhaps the most anticipated fight of the year so far, Cotto versus Martinez. What do you expect to see at Madison Square Garden, Teddy? Well, I mean, Cotto's 33 years old. He's got 42 fights. And Martinez is 39 years old. He's got 55 fights. Hey, look, forget all the propaganda. The best days have passed these guys. They're still going to make a good fight. I think it'll be an interesting fight, no doubt about it. But they're in the twilights of their careers. Cotto likes to come forward with the left hook. Martinez, you come in six inches, he likes to go back nine inches and look to counter. I think it's going to be a situation here where Martinez will look to catch Cotto coming in, and Cotto will look to catch Martinez going out. At 39 years of age, Martinez, off of two knee surgeries, off of a, over a year of inactivity, I think Martinez is going to have a little problem staying ahead of Cotto. Martinez recently doesn't do as good a job of doing what his forte is, getting out just ahead of you. Now he gets out a little late, and I think Cotto, with that left hook, has a chance to catch Martinez going out. A dollar short, a day late, is Martinez, or a couple seconds slow and a couple inches too late. I like Cotto in the upset. It is the Puerto Rican Day Parade weekend in New York City, and Miguel Cotto has never lost at Madison Square Garden during that weekend. He's 4-0, will look to make it 5-0 tomorrow in a huge matchup at MSG.